I'm Ryan from ExtremeTerrain.com and this is Throttle Out. We're going to be doing a monthly video where we focus on Jeep builds that we've done, some new and exciting Jeep parts, of course Jeep news especially about the next generation Wrangler, and of course we'll take you out on the trails with us. So for this month we're going to start out with this awesome build that we did of a two-door JK. Let's check it out. Today we got our hands on a 2015 two-door JK that used to be stock. For this build, we decided to go big and installed a Rough Country 4-inch lift kit with shocks that gives us more than enough clearance to run a set of 35-inch tires. Along with the lift, we installed some supporting mods like a set of Rough Country control arm geometry correction brackets, a Rugged Ridge exhaust spacer kit, and up front we went with something that isn't quite as functional but something a lot of you have been interested in, and that's the Rough Country dual steering stabilizer setup. So let me walk you through the build. In a time when a lot of people are doing low center of gravity builds where they have a minimum amount of lift for a big tire, we wanted to go a little bit more old school. Now, four inches of lift is a lot for any JK, but especially for a two door. However, it really fit with what we wanted for this build. And we decided to go with the Rough Country 4 inch lift kit with shocks because it has everything you need to get on the road and get rolling again. It does it on a budget and it gives you a lot of opportunity to upgrade and customize your Jeep and your suspension depending on how you're going to use the Jeep down the line. We could have put 37 inch tires under this Jeep to make it look not quite as tall, but as you may or may not know, they can require a lot of additional upgrades like re-gearing and beefing up brakes and the axle assemblies themselves, which is why we decided to go with the 35s. This kit includes, of course, four new coil springs that are gonna provide those four inches of lift, but the springs aren't only longer, they're also going to be stiffer than the factory ones. So if you have some armor, heavy bumpers, a winch, or heavy spare tire, these springs are gonna fare a lot better and not sag as much as those factory springs would. Something else I like about this kit is that the springs provide the entire amount of lift. With some smaller Rough Country lift kits, the lift is provided by a spring and a coil spring spacer. I much prefer this setup where all four inches come from the springs by themselves. The kit also includes four new shocks that are going to be longer than the factory ones to accommodate the new taller ride height. The shocks that are included in this kit are the Rough Country Performance 2.2 shocks, which are going to be an upgrade over the 2.0s. These shocks are still a hydraulic shock. Now let's talk about the difference between a hydraulic and a nitrogen shock for a minute. A nitrogen shock has a nitrogen charge inside of it, which will help to control foaming and cavitation that can cause shock fade when the shock is worked really hard. However, a nitrogen shock will also ride a little bit stiffer than a hydraulic. So the hydraulic shocks included in this kit are going to ride a little bit softer, however you're not going to have that protection against foaming and cavitation. To be honest with you, for what most of us use our Jeeps for, a hydraulic shock is just fine and the softer ride provides more comfort on the road. If you're doing high speed desert racing and you're going over washboards, maybe you should look into a nitrogen shock. But again, for most of us, for trail riding, a hydraulic shock is just fine. While the kit doesn't include adjustable track bars front and rear, it does have track bar brackets in the front and the rear. Outback, having a track bar relocation bracket is pretty common with most lift heights. And while this isn't the beefiest track bar bracket I've ever seen, which could cause a little bit of sway down the line, it is enough to get the Jeep back on the road and rolling. And again, it's something you can upgrade if you decide to down the line. Now on the other hand, the front track bar bracket is a little bit unique and not every kit includes one. This kit includes a front track bar relocation bracket and a drop pitman arm, which needs to be run in conjunction with each other. If you're gonna run one, you have to run the other. If you only install one of those, you'll end up with steering geometry issues that will cause really bad bump steer. Now, personally, I'd rather not run a drop pitman arm on my Jeep. It can cause some additional leverage in the steering system, which can be felt up through the steering wheel. So in my opinion, it's better to leave the drop pitman arm and the front track bar bracket in the box and just get an adjustable track bar for the front of the Jeep. However, going along with the build and with the theme of the lift kit, it includes everything you need. And if you install everything in the box, you'll have a Jeep that runs down the road just fine. Another part that's included with this kit that isn't in a lot of other ones, even some more expensive lift kits, are the rear coil spring shims. Now when you lift the Jeep, especially four inches, you can end up with a curve in the rear coil springs. 
that can cause one half of the spring to bind before the other does. These shims will straighten out the rear coil springs, fixing the binding issue, and ensure that the springs give you the full four inches of lift. Along with the shims, the kit includes all of the other brackets and hardware that you need to get it installed on the Jeep, including a set of brake line relocation brackets. Now the style of bracket that's included in this kit is really simple, and that's perfectly fine for the back of the Jeep. Even some more expensive lift kits include a similar bracket. However, when you install that bracket on the front of the Jeep, it forces you to straighten out the factory hard brake lines, which is something I would personally rather not do. So I would recommend getting a set of new longer front brake lines and not installing the relocation brackets on the front of the Jeep. The installation is going to be a little bit more involved because you have to bleed out the brake system, but in my opinion, it's completely worth it to not have to straighten out those brake lines and to ensure that you have plenty of length so the brake lines don't go taut when you're off-road. This kit also includes a set of cam bolts, which will help to get your pinion and caster angle back on the front of the Jeep. A lack of caster can cause a flighty feel when driving down the road, and a bad pinion angle can cause vibration and premature driveline wear. So the cam bolts are a good idea. However, they only provide a small amount of adjustment and they can be a little bit difficult to install because you do have to do some cutting. So for our build, we decided to go with a set of Rough Country Control Arm Geometry Correction Brackets instead. Anytime you lift the Jeep three and a half inches or more, you'll want to correct for pinion and caster. And these are a really inexpensive and easy way to do that. Another way to correct those two angles is by adding adjustable lower control arms, but they can be more expensive. However, you do get a little bit more with a control arm than you get with these brackets. Most control arms will have spherical joints on them that will allow you to have greater articulation when you're off-road. And while these brackets are less expensive, they do decrease ground clearance just a little bit. So as you can see, there's a trade-off there. But depending on how you want to use your Jeep and what your budget is, a lot of times these brackets make sense. Getting the brackets installed on the Jeep is pretty straightforward, especially when you install them during a lift kit like we did, because you can install them without the springs in the Jeep. When there's no weight on the axle, you can more easily move it around to help you get the bolts reinstalled after the brackets are in place. Either way, you'll have to remove both upper and lower frame side control arm bolts, install the brackets, and you're done. Now, there are a few different companies that offer a bracket like this, and these are some of the less expensive ones. However, when you actually see these brackets, there's nothing to them. They're really simple, and I honestly don't see a reason to spend more. Once we had the suspension geometry taken care of, we had to take a look at the drive shaft clearance. Anytime you lift the Jeep, especially this high, you can end up having clearance issues between the drive shaft and the hot exhaust pipe. In fact, you can end up melting the boot on the drive shaft, which can cause the drive shaft to wear out prematurely. Adding the Rugged Ridge Exhaust Spacer Kit gives you a little bit more clearance between the drive shaft and the exhaust, especially at full droop off-road. The kit is really inexpensive and easy to install. However, as with any exhaust work, you'll want to make sure that you spray the bolts with a good penetrating oil well beforehand. They can definitely get rusty. And it'll help to have a large pry bar handy to create enough separation between the two pieces of pipe to install your new spacer. The last component we installed on the Jeep is the Rough Country Dual Steering Stabilizer Kit. Now, we didn't need to install this kit because we have four inches of lift or because we're running a slightly larger tire. In fact, a dual steering stabilizer kit isn't a necessity. An OE style single stabilizer is more than enough no matter how large your lift is or what size tire you're running. It's really important to understand what a steering stabilizer or more accurately steering dampener is designed to do. And that is when you're driving down the road and you hit a bump, it'll absorb or dampen some of the shock that the tire feels so you don't feel all of that coming up through the steering wheel. They're definitely not there to fix any sort of wobble or death wobble, and they won't cure bump steer. If you have any suspension issues like that, there are ways to diagnose and cure those, but a steering stabilizer is not one of them. However, if you decide to run dual steering stabilizers on your Jeep because you like the look, this is a pretty good kit to go with. It's complete, the brackets are really well built, and it's fairly well priced for what it is. So for this build, we wanted to go big, and I think we did that. Four inches of lift, as I said, is a lot on any JK, but especially for a two-door. And I know it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. But I also know a lot of you guys were interested in seeing what a two-door JK looked like with four inches of lift. And here you go. 
the lift kit we decided to install in this Jeep was really complete and along with the supporting mods we added, we ended up with a JK that is really tall but still very drivable. And you can take it out on the weekend and hit the trails. Well, this is the best part. The thing looked good when it was in the shop, but it looks even better outside and rolling down the road. And I know that four inches of lift is a lot for a JK, for any JK, but especially for a two-door JK. And this build certainly isn't gonna be everybody's cup of tea. But at the same time, I know a lot of you guys are really interested to see what a JK, especially a two-door, would look like with this much lift on it. And here you go, now you get to see it. But it's more than just what it looks like, it's how it performs and how it drives. And yeah, four inches of lift, it's high. And when you're sitting in it, you notice that right off the bat. Especially on this Jeep, it doesn't have any side steps and it's definitely a lot tougher to get into and out of, even for a tall guy like myself. This lift could definitely change the way that it looked and it changed the way that it drove a little bit, but not as drastically as you would think. It actually still has a lot of qualities of a stock suspension and it drives pretty well. For something that's lifted this high, it does sit in the road pretty well. It doesn't want to wander a lot. It actually doesn't have a ton of body roll, even with the slightly softer hydraulic shocks. Driving the Jeep down the road is when you really can feel what those geometry correction brackets did for you. Now, we don't have any sort of driveline vibration, and that certainly has something to do with those geometry correction brackets, but the Jeep also wants to self-center. The steering wheel wants to center itself so you don't end up with that flighty feel when you're driving down the road, which is definitely a good thing. When you lift the Jeep especially this high, there's always a chance that you're gonna have that flighty feeling due to lack of caster, but those geometry correction brackets definitely took care of that for us, and this thing is working great. The exhaust spacer isn't something that we're really gonna notice driving down the road, but it is something that we notice on the lift, and it's something that you're gonna notice when you're off-road because you're not gonna have any clearance issues between the drive shaft and the exhaust. That otherwise would definitely be an issue, especially with the Jeep that has this high of a lift, especially when we're off-roading with the sway bars disconnected, we would have had an issue. And once you melt the boot on the drive shaft, it ends up wearing out a lot sooner, and this will prevent that issue, all with a fairly easy install and a very small investment. Now you might be thinking, those drive shafts aren't gonna last very long anyway. That's four inches of lift on a two-door short wheelbase Jeep. And honestly, you might be right. These drive shafts are probably gonna wear out pretty quickly. But for now, on the road, they're working fine. And again, like everything else with this lift kit, it's something that we can upgrade down the line. The idea of a budget lift kit like the one that we decided to install in this Jeep is that it gets you lifted, big tires, gets you on the road, gets you rolling again, all with a minimal investment. And it leaves a lot of room for upgrading down the line. Sometimes you look at these more expensive lift kits and yeah, they include a lot of parts and pieces, but do I want all of them? What do all of them do? Well, with a lift kit like this, you're getting the minimum number of pieces that you need to get the Jeep rolling again. And then once you're driving it, once you're taking it off road, once you're using it however you're gonna use it, you can upgrade components as you need to, as you find it necessary, and really build a custom suspension under your Jeep. The only thing I'm noticing from the dual steering stabilizer is it is more difficult to turn the steering wheel. And that's not necessarily a good thing. You are gonna cause some more stress on your steering components. And again, in my opinion, it's worth it to just go with an OE replacement steering stabilizer over a dual setup. There really aren't a lot of benefits to the dual setup in my opinion, and it is gonna cost you a little bit more money. So the overall idea for this build was to go big, and I think we can all agree we accomplished that with this four inch lift. But along with the supporting mods that we installed, we ended up with a Jeep that still rides really well down the road, and we can take it off road on the weekends. So all in all, I'd say we accomplished our goal. So for more Jeep builds and for other great Jeep content, make sure you check out extremeterrain.com. But for now, I'm Ryan, thanks for watching. So that's what you get when you do a full build on a Jeep. But if you're just looking for a few products, make sure you check out Rampage products. We've recently added them to the website and we carry a few of their Fastback soft tops and a full line of their Fender Flares. 
I really like their soft tops for a couple of different reasons. They have some really nice features. One is that they have a Sunrider feature, which is really similar to your factory soft top, and it allows you to easily flip back the section of the soft top over the two front passengers, giving you that open air driving experience without having to take down the rest of the top. If you want to take it one step further and remove the three rear windows of the top, the Rampage top gives you a place to store those windows without damaging them. For those of you who have had a soft top for a while and throw your soft windows in the back seat or in the cargo area, you know that once they get scratched up, they're not clear anymore and it can make seeing out of them difficult. These tops have a storage area built right into the soft top that keeps those windows looking new for a good long time. Their fender flares come in either a rivet style that you see here or in a flat fender style which will give you some additional up travel without needing quite as much bump stop or allow you to run a little larger tire than you otherwise would be able to. Their flares are really nice because they come with lights. They are also able to be used with your inner fender liners from the factory which keeps you from having to buy additional hardware and that'll save you some money in the long run. So if you're interested in these Rampage products or anything else that we carry from them, make sure you check out the site. So the biggest thing in Jeep news right now is of course the next generation Wrangler, which will be called the JL. And we should be seeing that in 2018. So I'd expect to see them start showing up in late 2017, which means we have about a year to wait. Make sure you check out our blog at blog.extremeterrain.com for the most up-to-date pictures and news about the next generation Wrangler. But for now, there is quite a bit of information out there, although most of them are rumors and none of this is confirmed. So if some of this doesn't come true, don't come after me. But let's run through what we know, or at least what we think we know for now. The bulk of the rumors, especially early on, were around weight savings, and specifically for efficiency and fuel efficiency. So whether we're talking about body, drivetrain, or engine rumors, a lot of them are going to have to do with efficiency. But let's start out with the body. Especially early on, people were thinking that the new Jeep may be aluminum, taking a page out of the Ford F-150 book. Well, it seems more recently that possibly body panels on the Jeep will be aluminum, but for the most part it will still be a steel body on a steel frame. And that brings us right into our second rumor. Again, early on, we were thinking that the Jeep may be a unibody, almost like the old XJs, and again, that would be for weight savings. But based on the spy photos that we've seen, it looks like we're still going to be getting a body on frame design. So as far as the body goes, I think it's going to look similar to our current model year JK, or at least that's what the renderings are looking like so far. But again, sticking with the theme of miles per gallon increase and efficiency increase, we are looking at a windshield that is a little bit further swept back and is no longer foldable. Having the windshield not foldable will allow it to be structural, and if you guys have seen JK's rolled over in the past, you'll know that the windshield frame is a weak spot. So having that structural will be a really nice safety upgrade. Along with the windshield being further swept back, it looks like the grille may also be at a steeper angle, or at least the top edge of the grille have a little bit more of a curve to it, and again, that's just for aerodynamics. Finally, we come to the top. Some people were thinking originally that the top would no longer be removable. At this point, it's still looking like we're going to have a removable hard top and soft top. For the hard top, it will get a little bit of a rework to make the Freedom Panel hard top lighter weight and to make the panels easier to take on and off. The word on the new soft top design is that it's going to be soft panels that will be easily removable, but no longer have a frame and no longer fold into the trunk. The last thing as far as the body goes is lighting. We're really hoping that we'll get either an LED or an HID version of the current 7-inch round headlight on the new JL. At this point, it doesn't look like Jeep will be changing the shape of the headlight, which in my opinion is a good thing. Sorry, YJ owners. So let's talk about engine and transmission options. We're probably going to see a V6 3.6 liter Pentastar engine, even if it does have a few upgrades to increase efficiency. That engine's been shipping in the JK for years, it's tried and true, and I don't think any of us would have a problem if they were able to make that engine even more efficient and save us a few dollars at the pump. Now the next option that we're all really hoping that we get is a diesel. They've had it in Europe for a long time and they just haven't given it to us here in the US. 
We're hoping to see either a 2.8 or a 3.0 V6 Eco Diesel, something that they've been running in the Ram trucks for a while now. I know a lot of us like reading about the diesel swaps, but the price just wasn't attainable for most of us, so if we can have a diesel option right out of the factory, it would certainly be an answer to a lot of our prayers. Another engine option that we've only been hearing about more recently has been nicknamed the Hurricane, and that's a 2-liter, 4-cylinder turbocharged engine. And I know a lot of you guys hear small displacement turbocharger and think horsepower up top and high RPM. Not necessarily a lot of torque down low, which is what we want when we're off-road. Well, that was my thought process as well, but this has been done before, and we'll see if they can squeeze it out of the Hurricane and if they make it an option in our Wranglers. So as far as transmissions go, it looks like we are going to have an 8-speed automatic transmission. Chrysler's been doing that for a while now, and again, that will just be for increasing efficiency. Now in the beginning, it sounded like they were going to kill the 6-speed manual transmission altogether. And again, I think I'm with a lot of you guys in saying that not having a stick shift Wrangler is just un-American. Well, it sounds like now we will still get a 6-speed manual transmission, although it may be re-geared for the new motors and again to maximize efficiency. So that's engines and transmissions, now let's talk a little bit about the rest of the drivetrain. Early on it was sounding like the new JL was going to get an independent front and even possibly independent rear suspension. Well, if you take a look at the SPY photos, it looks like the new JL is going to be a solid axle Jeep, both front and rear. Now, as far as the axles themselves go, it looks like the rear Dana 44 axle that was a 10-bolt axle has been replaced with something that is a 12-bolt axle. So it'll be really interesting to see what sort of upgrades Dana has been able to make. Either way, it does look like they're sticking with the 5 on 5.5 bolt pattern that they currently have on the JKs. Now, as far as the four-wheel drive system goes, we currently have a manual connection right through the floor into our transfer case. If you believe some of the rumors, we may be getting an electronic four-wheel drive system similar to what's on the current model year Grand Cherokees. Now, if you ask me, an electronic four-wheel drive system just sounds like one more thing to break, and I really like having that manual connection into my vehicle. However, these are just rumors, so we'll see what ends up happening. So that's it for the news and rumors about the JL Wrangler, but I can't talk about news and rumors without talking about the possibility of a pickup truck Wrangler in 2018. Well, Chrysler has said that they're going to get into the small truck market, and why wouldn't they with as hot as it is right now? But what they haven't 100% confirmed is whether the new pickup truck is going to be on the Wrangler chassis or even under the Jeep name. I know that a lot of you guys, myself included, love the brute conversions, but at around six figures, they're a little bit too rich for my blood. So I would love to see a production model of Jeep Wrangler pickup truck being made. So that's it for news and rumors right now, but we'll definitely keep you guys updated. So make sure you check out next month's episode for the latest. So that's it for our first installment of Throttle Out. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you stay tuned next month where we take you out on the trails at our local off-road park. But for now, stay safe on the trails, and remember, when in doubt, throttle out.